Hey guys, Nikki Tricos of Life by Design. In this next tutorial, I'm going to show you my top five watercolor colors that I can't live without. If I were stranded on a desert island, I would hope to have a really yummy cocktail and some watercolor supplies so that I can enjoy the sun and paint all day long. So if I only had five tubes that I could bring with me, these would be the five colors that I would paint with. In this video, I'm going to show you how, I'll swatch the colors, but I'll show you how I mix them together to create really um, a diverse group of colors that I can use within my painting to inspire you if you're looking for some new color ideas or wondering which ones you should start with, this video is for you. So let's start looking at my top five colors to have. If you're just starting out and wanting to add some colors to your watercolor or just buying your first sets of colors, you can always get your traditional um, red, yellow, blue, and mix hundreds, if not thousands of colors. But um, sometimes I'm lazy and sometimes I just want colors that speak to me and um, don't wanna have to go and mix right from the primary. So these are kind of like a jump up from just your primary colors. So the first one I have is Permanent Rose. It's a really nice, um, pinkier red tone and opera rose actually would work well too. I've actually just run out for some reason my permanent rose tubes kind of get dried up. Um, and a buff titanium versus a white. White can muddy your watercolors so I like to add a bit of buff titanium just to um, tone down colors. I like colors that are a bit more muted so I'll show you how I use that. Um, a yellow ochre versus a true yellow Again, for me, I prefer colors that are a bit more muted um, versus bright. It's just, again, my own personal aesthetic. I also have an olive green. A sap green is another color that I tend to reach for sometimes too. And I can't live without Payne's Gray. I really love Payne's Gray. That's sort of at the top of my list. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, show you how to use these colors and maybe leave yourself a bit of room. I actually made my swatches a bit bigger, so as we start to blend, uh, we'll be able to have more room to play around with. Okay, so first off, we are gonna take some buff titanium. Make sure that your petal is nice and wet so that you can mix your buff titanium. For some reason, my brush is a little dry. Okay, so I'm gonna take some of this buff titanium and I'm gonna go right to the paper first wipe off the extra and take some of this yellow ochre and start to blend it to see what it looks like. So you can mix it two ways. You can mix it on your palette or actually mix it on your watercolor paper. Sometimes I like to see the transition there. I'm going to wash off my brush and even draw it down a bit, but I almost want to see what it looks like watered down. So that's just a really nice muted version of that yellow ochre, which actually looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna take even more watered down version of that and just a tiny bit of the permanent rose. Permanent rose is a little bit um, more pigmented, a stronger quality of pigment. So I don't want it to be too intense. But that gives me a really pretty, nice um, sort of peachy tone. So if you're doing some peonies that's a beautiful color that you can mix up. And what I did was just grabbed a little bit of that permanent rose with a tiny bit of the buff titanium. So look at how nice that looks. So that's why I like the buff titanium because it acts like um, how I would use a white without making my paint look muddy. So permanent rose versus um, permanent rose mixed with buff titanium, it's a mouthful is a really nice, pretty muted version. I'm gonna go ahead and just add a bit more water and see what that looks like watered down, which again is really nice. Maybe I'll even add a little bit of that yellow ochre and see what it begins to look like. So that's what I want you to do is just use the colors that you have you wanted to start with a yellow, a red, and a blue, your primary colors, go for it. But these are colors that I love and I love to play around with and mix with. So this is Buff Titanium plus Yellow Ochre. And if you wanted to even get just a clean, dry tissue, you can go ahead and remove some of the paint. You can even see what it would look like um, in, in a more diluted 
form, which is kind of cool. So this is more water. So this here is this mixture. We just added more water. And this is this mixture plus we've added a bit of permanent rose. And then we kept that same mixture and we added more, so it's my plus sign. It's like my uh, version permanent rose. And then here we, or we added a little bit of yellow ochre. So if I wanted to go ahead and recreate this color, I know I can mix a tiny bit of buff titanium, add a tiny bit of permanent rose, mix it in to see sort of what color is coming through, and then add a little bit of the yellow ochre if I wanted to add a little bit more warmth to create a, an orangey tone versus a more peachy tone. Okay, that's really cool. So let's go ahead and move on to, make sure my brush is nice and clean. Let's move on to our uh, Payne's Gray mixed with a tiny bit of the sap green. So these two color combinations um, are my favorite. So the Payne's Gray is a favorite color for me to paint with. I do a lot of lettering with it, a lot of botanicals with it. Um, and if I wanted to create a deep green, as you can see here, I just add it to sap green. So what if I wanted that color to be just a little bit more green? What I'm going to do is put my brush in a little bit of that sap green, add it to my mix, and you can see that it's a nice toned down version of the sap green. So the sap green is a little bit bright. Again, it's not my personal favorite for a color palette. I'm not, I tend not to work with a lot of bright colors. So for me, I love it when I have more of the muted tones versus the bold bright tones. Just my own personal aesthetic and style. Okay. So what we can even do is add a tiny bit of yellow ochre to that mix and let's see what we get. So just play, play and take notes. Ooh, I really like that actually. So I have more water on this brush because I can tell by how transparent it is. And you can see that addition of yellow ochre just really makes um, almost an avocado green or an asparagus green, which is really beautiful. So this is Payne's Gray plus Sap Green. And this is more Sap Green. So again, just my arrow's down, so I know that I've just added to that mix. And this is plus Yellow Ochre. Okay, so you can see how really easy it is to mix your colors together and see what they start to look like. And use this color board um, in the future when you are sitting down to paint something. Okay, I'll show you. This is one that I was using yesterday for a lesson that I taught in my watercolor class. I worked on a floral composition, a bouquet is what I was teaching. And again, part of the lesson was um, pulling out colors to see what you wanted to use in your painting. This is a very rough sketch, but that's what that looks like there. So this is Permanent Rose plus Payne's Gray. This is more Payne's Gray. And this is plus buff titanium and here we added plus more I'm just gonna write that down so I remember buff titanium but look at how very different those colors have turned out so here we did permanent rose plus Payne's gray so this is a mix of these two colors and then here we added um, oops, let me erase that we added more Payne's gray didn't we So we added more of the Payne's Gray. And then here we added the Sap Green to give us a really pretty color combination. Those are my five top colors and um, some really fun ways to create some great color combinations as you're sitting down to learn watercolors and learn how to paint a, a finished piece. There you have it. Those are my top five colors that are my go-tos if I was stranded on a desert island. Payne's Gray probably is my number one choice. I just, I love the inkiness of that color. If you haven't used it yet, I highly recommend getting your hands on a tube of that. 
Thank you for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe every Sunday. I post new videos here on YouTube. And if you like this video, don't forget to go ahead and click like and comment below. Let me know what you think, what you're working on, if you've taken away a tip that I shared with you, and also what you'd like to see next. I am all ears and I love, love, love when people ask me questions, send me DMs and emails. So thank you again. Enjoy the day and happy painting.